the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike, and today I'm going to go over the last game played between the uh, Lightning and Rangers. Lightning tied this one up. You know what? I'm I'm really surprised. Uh, I should say, I don't want to say I'm really surprised, but it's pretty crazy that um, you know the Lightning really came out of the gate slow. They were down two to nothing to to the Rangers, and out of nowhere, it's tied two to two. It's an even series, and as a matter of fact. You really think to it. It's a race to two wins for each team. Um, you know, New York is a team that once you put them in the corner, you know, you really don't want to do that because they've been, uh, you know, they've just been a, a team that once cornered finishes off uh, other guys. Uh, you would have thought that, you know, Tampa Bay would kind of see have seen this maybe give it a, a little bit more effort at the beginning of this series. But, hey, it's two to nothing now. Uh, the game uh, game uh, five is, is tonight, June 9th, and June and June 11th will be game sixth. Game seven is not scheduled yet, just in case. So, um, so we're gonna see how this goes. Braden Point is ruled out for tonight against the Lightning. You know he's got this lingering injury. Uh, you know he's their, you know their uh, their their top scoring machine, and they're finding success without him. Not saying that. You know, like this is a prolonged thing, or 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 something that, you know, that maybe they can not worry about it if they go against the Colorado Avalanche. But it's something to be worried about, man. I mean, we're talking about a guy who is, you know, he, this isn't a number one draft pick, but he sure as heck is playing like one. He put up, I'm, I'm not sure how many goals this year. I'd have to look that up. But I could have sworn I saw 40. The guy's the freaking machine, and he's out. They've got the Rangers tied two to nothing, and I'm looking for them to close out of this series and, and make it on to the, to the finals. Could they three-peat? I don't know. The Rangers could come back and, and make a fool out of me. They've been doing that all, all year, so, uh, so we'll have to see. I had to look it up. 28 goals, and he had 58 points on the season, and he was a minus five. Not very impressive, but he puts up a lot of points for the uh, for, for Tampa Bay. Um, he's a, a, a big-time scorer for them, and um, I'm moving on. The Colorado Avalanche are stuck in, on their laurels. They can do nothing until this season is over with. How is this going to affect this team? I think that these guys are razor-focused right now. They understand what they what they want to do, what they are looking to do. Last season was a uh, when they ran into into Vegas. You know, it things didn't turn out the way that they expected it to. But they learned from their mistakes. They were an absolute bulldozer this season. They are waiting for the winner in this West. I'm sorry, in this Eastern Conference matchup. And um, I, I think I don't think that they're going to have the same problem that. Uh, that Tampa was having, uh, you know, having their time off, you know, because they had, uh, they won their last series four to nothing. So we're going to see how that goes. I'm going to move on to some NHL news. But before I do that, I want, I got to tell you guys, this podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. Now they have a kit that's pretty awesome. It's, it's, well, they have one shaver and then they have what they call like a, it's like a, they have this crop preserver of what they call, and you you got to spray it in your area, and you know what it it's great after after a shave. So you guys need to check that out. They've got it, they have a kit that comes with the shaver and a nose hair trimmer, which is freaking awesome because um, I actually noticed that I'm getting to that age where you got to take care of that stuff and you can't be walking around with nose hair coming out of your nose, ear hair coming out of your ears. You know, you're going to look like a, an, uh, an 85 year old man and uh, you know, at the ripe age of 40. So you got to take care of that stuff. Go to their website. They have all kinds of products there and use our code shy Tomahawk and you can get 20% off of anything that you order on the website as long as you use that code personally i strongly suggest just getting the kit um so you can get the shaver and the nose hair trimmer and they've got some other products uh, on there as well that you can check out they've got something called the plow 2.0 which is pretty much like a straight edge straight edge um like handled razor like it kind of looks like a safety razor that you could use to uh you know kind of trim things up and these parts are all replaceable, and they recommend that you replace these parts every three months, you know, just for uh, for hygiene's sake. So 
Go to manscaped.com, use code Shy Tomahawk, and check out what they got and saves 20%. So, moving on to some NHL news. Malcolm Subban, ha- I'm sorry, not Malcolm Subban, uh, PK Subban has won the King Clancy Trophy. Uh, defenseman is honored for commitment to racial, social justice, and underserved youth and COVID-19 relief. I'm glad he's doing something because I'll be honest with you, he's somewhat of a piece of shit on the ice this year. But I'm glad that the guy is. Uh, I'm glad that the guy is is out there and and he's always been really good in the community and and taking care of things to the community and being a leader on on that aspect. So I really tip my hat to him and uh, I want to congratulate him on that. But you know, with with the how many slewfoots he's had this year? I just thought that it was, uh, you know, not in in who he was as a as as a character, and especially who he is off the ice. So uh, I'm glad that uh, you know he's doing good things off the ice, and uh, and I, I I commend him on that. Keenan Thompson is going to host the NHL Awards on June 21st, which is uh, which is kind of crazy. You know, I wonder the the, the league's. Not, I mean, I don't think it's going to be over with, especially if the finals go seven games. I don't know how they can have an award show and the and the Stanley Cup finals isn't decided yet, uh, unless they can plan, you know, seven games in ten days. But that's absolutely insane if they're going to expect these guys to to play a schedule like that. So. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, one thing that I, I did want to talk about today was um, was the you know the Blackhawks. They have uh, they had a a series going on YouTube, and they are talking about women that are in the Blackhawks organization and highlighting you know their positions and how they got there and. And and essentially, kind of their, you know, how they they came to the organization. And we had Jenna Rose on the, on the podcast, you know, I want to say a couple months ago, and she was great. You know, she's really good at her job. She's a, a jack of all trades. You could call her a renaissance woman in, in content production. You know, creating her own content or. You know, being on the content team for the Blackhawks, I think she asked really great questions after. You know, after the game is over, talking to players, and you know, she had some unsavory comments made to her on on uh, social media. And you know what? This this stuff can't happen. You know, there's a lot of women out there that are trying to break into sports, which is a heavily male dominated space, and they should have that equal opportunity to be able to do that without being harassed or without being, um, you know, having crass comments sent to them. You know, while they're uh, while they're trying to do their job. So, guys, uh, if you're listening to this and you're one of those guys, you know, knock that shit off. You know, we don't need it. Uh, they don't need it. They're trying to, you know, to make a difference in and to be a leader for young women trying to get into this space as well. So, um, I just wanted to make that comment. You know, she's a really sweet uh, young lady, and I think that she's doing great jobs, for, uh, a great job for the Chicago Blackhawks. Moving on. Dylan Strom and Scheidel are game time calls for game five. Not Dylan Strom. I've, I'm talking about the Blackhawks. <laughs> I'm, I'm on. Uh, I'm thinking of Dylan Strom, Ryan Strom for the New York Rangers uh, as the game time, game time decision. You know this guy. I, I, I've, I've always been thinking that he's obviously I think the better Strom brother, and. I think that he's become a really good piece for for the New York Rangers. I think that he's been, you know, pretty consistent for them. He gives a lot of effort, you know, when he's out there and in a way he can turn a game over if uh and you you know you not being expecting it. So, we'll see how uh, how that plays off for Ryan and uh and and see how they move forward. I don't know how this series is going to end. I'm really curious and um Looks like the Edmonton Oilers are looking for Kane to come back next season. He thanked the fans. Um, I think that he's a good fit for this team. He's that second, you know, that that second tier scoring that they need. But they need they they need help on 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 the goalie situation, especially if they're putting up five to six six goals a game in the playoffs and they're still losing. You know that's that's uncalled for. Or being up four to two and and losing that game. You know that that's uncalled for. So they're gonna have to figure that out. And you know we'll uh, we'll have to see how uh, what kind of moves they make in this off season. But they're really close, just based off of a uh, Connor Connor McDavid's talent. And Leon Dreisaitl had a very quiet 
great series, um, a great playoff run, I should say. Uh, I got to tip my hat to that guy. He was dealing with a high ankle sprain, and I believe he still put up two, 22 points after he got that ankle sprain, which is absolutely incredible. So I uh, tip my hat to him. Edmonton Oilers, I thought that they uh, they did a they did a good job in the playoffs. We thought that they were going to bow out in the first round. That wasn't the case because, uh, uh, you know, McDavid turned it into, you know, NHL 22 apparently. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. Guys, I want to thank everybody for listening. We're very, very appreciative. We're winding down this season. After this season is over, we're going to go over Blackhawks positions, Blackhawks news, and uh, we're going to move to one podcast a week, okay? So when the season is over, Stanley Cup is won, we're going to move to one a week, and then we're going to go over all the positions, right wing, left wing, defense, and uh, we're going to talk about the coaches too, so stay tuned. We've got some content coming out over the summer, and we're going to be working on some changes that we're going to be doing for next year as well. So uh, stay tuned, guys. We really appreciate it. If this is your first time, do us a favor, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. This is the Tomahawk, and we're out of here.